Hello, it's Fred McCoy, Hatfield McCoy Museum in Liberty, Kentucky, fredmccoy.com. We're doing another segment on keeping it real. And on these keeping it real segments, they're short, to the point, and they're corrections of something that's been said or, or that was done and uh, that it's not true. Um, it's a mistruth, so we're gonna correct that. Um, watching a video the other day and I heard this guy say that uh, Devil Ants was in charge of uh, Randall McCoy, that he was over Randall McCoy, that Randall McCoy served under him. And um, you know, the best thing to do that Sheila and I have done for the last 30 years is look at documentation. And there's no better documentation than Civil War records. Back during the Civil War, nobody knew that one day Randall McCoy and Devil Ants Hatfield was going to be famous for fighting a feud. Nobody knew that. So there was no need during the Civil War to falsify records, to make one look better than the other, or anything like that. So you look at these Civil War records, and they are what they are. Um, how can you be in charge of somebody when you're in a private? When you're a private. I know a lot of people says, oh, Devil Ants was a captain. And they can say this till the cows come home, and you guys can believe this if you want. And Devil Ants Hatfield put the monument on his grave, and he put the inscription on the back that says captain. This man was a narcissist. He loved himself, and he loved to build himself up. Now, just because you put it there, I don't make it real. Here's Devil Ants Hatfield's Civil War records. Private. Um, all down through here is Civil War records. This one here has its height of 5'6". We're not on that. We, we'll do a video if we haven't done one already. Uh, because they say he's six foot tall and 180 pounds of hell, he was five foot six. He had little man syndrome. There's his uh, certified copy of his uh, prisoner of war, or the, um, um, not prisoner of war, but his, his desertion papers um, that he had. Over here, once again, it's, it's desertion. He's been deserted since February of 1863. Now remember, Devil Lance didn't go in. We don't have the definite date of entrance into the Civil War, but from everybody's perspective, it was the fall of 62 that he went in. So he goes in in the fall of 62, in the fall. So is that October, November? Because December and January is winter. So, uh, so he goes in October of 62, and by February, and that's when they done the paperwork. February, he's reported deserted already. How do you go into the Civil War, you can't read and write, and you become a captain in uh, three, four months? It don't happen. So if you want to believe that, you can believe it, but it's not true. Down here, on the other hand, is Randall McCoy's Civil War records. And, Devil, and Randall McCoy was also uh, a private. So you had Devil Ants and Randall McCoy both privates. Now remember that when Devil Ants deserted, him and a bunch of his family members all took off together at the Battle of Pond Creek and they left. And when they left, that left all the men that were still there fighting, they were either killed or they were taken prisoner of war. Randall McCoy was a private when he went in and a private when he got out. But he got out two years later after serving two years at Camp Douglas in uh, Illinois uh, in a prison camp. So uh, he never made any more rank either, but at least he stayed in. <clears throat> we done a story one time, and, and this lady on the internet, she got ill with me, and she said, um, why are you so down on Devil Lance for about him um, deserting? And... Uh, I'm down on Devil Ants on a lot of things. First of all, he's West Virginia Hatfield. And again, it was Kentucky Hatfields and McCoys against West Virginia Hatfields and McCoys.
But uh, Devil Ann's done a lot. Hat filled, huh? Huh? You're part Hatfield. And Devil Ann's done a, a lot of bad things. Again, exactly. I'm part Hatfield. So uh, when I talk about the Hatfields, I'm Kentucky Hatfield. I'm from Preacher Ansel's side. But what I was going to say is the lady says, why is it that bigger deal that he deserted? And I said, well, I've been a police officer for 30 years at the time. Let's say there's a bank robbery and there's 10, there's 15 guys inside that bank robbing that bank. And me and two other guys are going in. There's only three of us there. And we say, okay, you take five, I'll take five and you take five. And we've got that in our mind. So we can go in there and try to uh, even things out. We go in to these bank robbers and as we're going in the door, the third officer, my backup, decides that he wants to go home. He wants to uh, abandon the mission. And he takes off. Well, now, instead of having five, five, and five, which was already, a, a, we're outnumbered, but now you've got the other man that he was supposed to take care of now come to me and the second officer. And so when Devil Ants left with all his family and they deserted, then that left Randall McCoy and all the men there uh, to fend for themselves. Here's you, uh, his dad deserted with them and different ones, but here, right here out of the blue, I just saw when we walked up here, there's Ellison Hatfield. Now, Altina Waller says that Ellison Hatfield fought at Gettysburg. First of all, the 45th was never at Gettysburg. So he, had he not deserted, he still wouldn't have been at Gettysburg because the 45th wasn't there. Altina Waller says that he's a war hero and he served at Gettysburg. Now, there's your record where he deserted when the rest of them did. And uh, it's pretty hard to be in Gettysburg when you're a deserter. The last comment I'll make, this same gentleman when he was talking about Devil Ants, uh, Randall McCoy serving underneath Devil Ants. He also makes a statement. Yeah, Devil Ants abandoned the Civil War and he returned home. He, he didn't abandon the Civil War, he, he deserted. See how they have these plays on words uh, according to who you're talking to, whether it's Hatfield or McCoy. Uh, the play on words, abandon the Civil War. Why not just say he deserted? That's what it's called. And that's what it was called back in that day. And uh, still called that today. So anyway, keeping it real. Stay tuned. More information to come. We're, we're going to clear up so many myths. They're giving us so much material to do videos on. I may not be the best presenter. My wife says I'm over passionate when I talk about things. I get too involved. Well, that's my demeanor and I'm sorry for that. But... There's so many people that's not even Hatfield or McCoy. And they, they want to tell people the history of our family. And uh, it, it's just not right. Keeping it real, FredMcCoy.com. See you next time.